Who are you? I don't know, but I'm writing to you anyway. Where are you? How far in the future? Where'd you find my journal? I may never know, but you can know me from what I put down on these pages. I come from a little village in the mountains. No one has left here since before I was born. But our lives changed overnight, just a few days ago when my best friend had a prophetic dream. A vision that the elder said means this season is going to end soon. The world is about to enter a new era. A great change is coming. Everyone was afraid. I was surrounded by questions and I began to feel how little I know. What is this season that is about to end? And why is it ending? What exactly is out there that could turn the world inside out? If there are still voices singing and laughing in the wilderness, I could record them before they're gone. I also thought of my dad, who always wanted to see the outside world but never did. So, I asked if I could leave. The elder had one condition for letting me go that I take what I collect to the museum vault, a palace of art and memory at the edge of the earth. She says it's the only place safe from the turmoil of a changing season. I hope that's where you're reading this now. I can't stop the change that is coming, but this time on earth could live on in these pages. What it looks like, sounds like, how it feels to be alive right now. I'm writing to you at the crack of dawn on the morning I leave home. I can smell breakfast cooking in the other room and I can hear my mom's voice. The last moment in this little house. There used to be three of us here. My mom and dad and me. Soon it will be just her. Her and all these memories. But in this moment, everything is the same as ever. Until I shift my weight. The floorboards creak. Mom hears it and turns to me. You're up. What are you doing standing there? Time to get going. It's gonna be a beautiful morning. I'm making progress. I found the burner, camera, recorder, travel bag. Breakfast is in progress. Still gotta make a pendant. We haven't used this in so long. Good thing I saved the instructions. Just as you would use a shield to protect your body, an identity pendant protects your mind. Your thoughts, memories, everything that makes you, you. We don't wear them here in the village anymore. 
But if you're going into the outside world, I'll feel better when you've got a pendant shield in you. Diseases of the mind, like the dream sickness. We don't know what caused it. We heard people suddenly fell into an eternal sleep. These were years of wild rumors, and half of them turned out to be true. In times of war, a pendant can be used to identify a body. <sighs> Let's skip that part. Objects have two layers, the physical and the mental. The pendant needs to absorb both. One, collect a sentimental object for each sense. Sound, smell, feel, sight, taste. Two, feel the sense and speak aloud a memory of the object. Three, feed the object into the burner. The memory will leave the speaker as it is transferred to the pendant. That means I'll forget the memory after I say it. It's supposed to be painless, at least. No, you must remember everything. That's your role. The pendant needs this little sacrifice. I want to be sure it works. Don't be afraid. A few memories is a small price to pay for knowing you'll be safe. Okay, so. This old tape should work for our sense of sound. I remember. You and I fell asleep listening to this tape. Your dad came home. We all rested together until it got dark. What an odd feeling. Like an absence. Disappearing. The empty space fills itself back in. Until I forget that I forgot anything at all. <sighs> I'm glad I'm only losing a few memories. If I lost too many, I wouldn't even know who you are. You should pick the rest of the objects. I'll lose the memories, but you'll have them in a pendant forever. So they should be important to you. They should be parts of your identity you want to be sure to protect. So think about what these items and what the memories would preserve about you. Let's do smell next. Find an object with a strong odor and that holds a piece of you. Nothing. I used to see souls everywhere. Childhood, too sweet, too old. I always wanted to experience new things. Granite, seaside, darkness. This speaks to how my mom loves me.
honey, wax, baby, waves. I was loved by people I have no memory of. Ancient perfume sweet. Nothing is ever lost. Sweet wax honey. How I've tried to save things. Nothing. I always looked for other worlds. Tangled nest, sour play. This speaks to how my dad loved me. Clue, acid, dust, pulp. How I always wanted to meet these strangers. Nothing. I look closely. Sour, handshake, sweat. I always had the intuition the world could change completely. Nothing. I remember who my dad was. Nothing. I was born in the glow of my parents' love. How I've tried to save things. What did you choose for smell? Let's breathe in deep. I remember. These were a present from your friend Pate. It was such a special gift that you wouldn't eat a single one. But after a while, the candy became as hard as rocks. The candy was meant to give one moment of sugary joy. And you realized, we talked about this, that by trying to save them, they lost their purpose. It might have been better to just enjoy them in the moment. Now touch. Pick something with the texture you like. Fabric, skin, plush, limbs. This speaks to how my dad loved me. Three, two, one, hooray! Me. 
Mr. Lotto's here. So what did you end up choosing? Okay, feel the object. I remember. You used to take him everywhere with you. One night, you forgot him in the plaza. It was cold and rainy that night. But your dad leaped into action as if the doll was a real member of the family. I have this image of his face as he ran out into the storm, completely serious, no hesitation. And when your dad returned with the doll, I forgot for a moment that he's just fabric, stitched into the form of an animal. It felt as if he had a soul because you'd projected one into him. What was dear to you was dear to us. That was... We were whole for a little while. I'm fine. Let's do sight next. Pick something that... that looks nice. Mom and Dad before I was born. I was born in the glow of my parents' love. So, what did you end up choosing? I remember. This was the night I told your dad I was pregnant with you. There was a party in the plaza. I didn't have anything to drink, just water. He didn't wonder why. At the end of the night, I told him I was pregnant. And he was so happy. And so surprised that he, well, he threw up. For taste, we can eat breakfast and feed some to the burner. The memory I'll lose is the one we're forming right now. I want you to have it forever. We're standing here, you're having a last taste of home. Now you're protected by lost memories. A gem of home around your neck. This is my only condition for letting you go. You must promise me never to take the pendant off. And never tamper with it. Okay? Then I'm okay with you leaving. I think your camera and bag are still in your room. It's time to gather them up.
I've lost so much. How could the world ask me to lose you too? Look at us. There we are. There we were. We'll always be right here on this beautiful morning. I just performed a ritual with my mom. The moment has passed, but I'll record it in these pages for you for the future. I never knew when my mom would share a memory of dad while cooking on a walk with no warning. It knocked the wind out of me. Rituals take this grief and give it a shape and a story. Filling in this journal is a ritual too, but for a loss that hasn't hit us yet. <laughs> 